Good morning. This is Good Friday. I would imagine that if anyone were interviewing the disciples 2,000 years ago, they would be asking, and what's good about it? <laughs> All this week, I've been, been trying to share with you about the life of Jesus, the last week of Jesus' life, and how that lined up with Old Testament prophecy. I want to do that for you again. You know, uh, just looking, preparing for today, it shows me that there are so many things that were predicted in the Old Testament that if Jesus wasn't God, if God wasn't in control, there is no way one man could have made all of this happen. And I want to share some of those illustrations with you, facts rather, with you, okay? So here we go. I know I'm not going to share all of them, but in Isaiah 53 verse 7, Keep in mind, that's Old Testament. It says he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a lamb that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth. Well, Matthew 27, verse 12 says, And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. In Isaiah chapter 50, verse 6, it says, I gave my back to those who strike me, and my cheeks to those who pluck, it, pluck out the beard. I did not cover my face from humiliation and spitting. In Matthew 26, Mark 15, Luke 23, and John 19, all of them talk about how Jesus was scourged. He was crowned with a crown of thorns. They, they beat his head with a reed while he had that crown of thorns on his head. They slapped him in the face, and they spit on him, and they mocked him. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, it says, But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. In Matthew 27, verse 26, it says, Then he, being Pilate, he released Barabbas for them, but after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. In Psalm 22, verse 16, it says, For dogs have surrounded me, and a band of evildoers has encompassed me. They Listen to this. They pierced my hands and feet. This prophecy was made hundreds of years before crucifixion was even used as a method of execution. But again, Matthew 27, Mark 15, Luke 23, John 19, all describe the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Crucifixion was where they would put nails in their hands and their feet and sus uh, suspend them to a cross. I, I, I could go on, but man, there is one in particular that I want you to see, and that is from Amos chapter 8, verse 9. It says, It will come about in that day, declares the Lord God, that I will make the sun go down at noon and make the earth dark in broad daylight. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. Now, from the sixth hour, that's the, the Jewish time frame of, of uh, telling time, in our time, that's noon. So, from the sixth hour, noon, darkness fell upon the land until the ninth hour, that's about three o'clock in the afternoon. There is no way, if Jesus was just a mere man, no way he could have made that happen. And you need to keep in mind that these, these things are being recorded by people in the, in the New Testament who were there. They are either eyewitnesses or they talked to people who were eyewitnesses. So again, if I'm, I'm those apostles, I would say, what's so good about it? You and I know the Sunday is coming. And we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ on that day. But if nothing I've said so far really does anything for you right now, maybe you're hearing this, this devotional and you're thinking, and? Because <laughs> that really doesn't change my outlook on life. really doesn't change what I'm going through right now. Well, given everything that Jesus had gone through, with him hanging on that cross, and I'm thinking if we're back in that time 2,000 years ago, about now, it's 9 o'clock in the morning, 
could very well be that Jesus was either hanging on the cross at this time or on his way. In spite of everything that Jesus went through, while he's on the cross, he spoke these words. Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit, or I commit my spirit. If Jesus could pray that from the cross after everything that he had been through, my friend, maybe that's the place where you need to be. You can't change your circumstances, but you can by faith say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Dear God, please help us to do that. I know you love us just like you love Jesus Christ. And even though the situation at that point looked very, very hopeless, you knew what was coming. You always know the other side. So I pray for whoever is listening, just like I pray for myself. Lord, we can't always change our circumstances, but we can look to you. So I pray today that you would give us the courage and the faith to say, Father, I commit myself to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.